Good morning everyone! For today, you're going to learn about track and field events or athletics. Athletics is claimed to be the oldest sport known to mankind. Man, in order to survive, has to be a sprinter. He has to perform the role of man and beast in his quest for basic needs. Athletics, also known as track and field or track and field athletics, is a collection of sports events that involves running, throwing, and jumping. The term athletics is derived from the Greek word athlos, which means contest. Athletics was the original event at the first Olympics in 776 BC where the only event held was the stadium length foot race or state. Also, the International Association of Athletics Federations is a worldwide governing body for track and field events and athletic as a whole. Associations at the national, state, and local level generally follow IAFF rules, though modifications can exist. The Philippine Amateur Track and Field Association is the national governing body for athletic sports such as track and field, road running, cross-country running, and race walking in the Philippines. This is an overview of a track and field dimension and the facilities and equipments used in athletics. field consists of three types. Those are running, jumping, and throwing. The running activities make up the track events. The jumping and throwing events make up the field events. The track events are sprints, hurdles, relays, middle, and long distance. The field events are the long jump and triple jump. Now, let's discuss about the running events. Here are types of sprint starts. There are three types of sprint starts and those are bunch or bullet start, medium start, and elongated start. When we say bunch or bullet start, the toes or the rear foot are approximately level with the heel of the front foot and the both feet are placed well back from the starting line. Medium start, the knee of the rear leg is placed opposite a point in the front half of the front foot. And lastly, elongated start, the knee of the rear leg is level with or slightly behind the heel of the front foot. Of course, you are familiar of these words on your marks, set, and go. Okay, let's talk about them one by one. First, when we say on your marks, this is when you place your front foot at forearm's length behind the start line and you are placing the knee of your back leg on the ground level with your front foot and placing your hands at shoulder width apart behind but not on the line. Set is when you raise your hips slightly higher than your shoulders and you're making sure that both your legs remain bent your front leg at about 90 degrees and back leg at about 120 degrees when you hear go that is you drive your back leg forward and swing your arms hard let's proceed short distance or sprints a sprint is a short running race. In a track and field competition, there are generally three different sprint distances. We have 100 meter, 200 meters, and 400 meters. Indoor is 60 meters, and the original Olympic event, the stadium race, was a sprint of around 180 meters. The middle distance races are the 800 meters the 1,500 meters and the one mile long runs. These races require different skills and the tactics to win that the sprints, they rely more on endurance and pacing than just pure speed. Okay, the runners don't stay in a single lane for the entire race. 
for our long distance, there are three main long distance races, the 3,000 meters, the 5,000 meters, and the 10,000 meter races. These races are similar to the middle distance races, but the emphasis is even more on correct pacing and endurance. Let's proceed to relay races. There are two very common relay events, the 4x100 meters relay and the 4x400 meters relay. Relay races are the only track and field event in which a team or runners directly compete against other teams. Typically, a team is made up of four runners of the same sex. Each runner completes their specified distance before handing over a baton to a teammate. There is usually a designated area where athletes must exchange the baton. Teams may be disqualified if they fail to complete the change within the area or if the baton is dropped during the race. A team may also be disqualified if its runners are deemed to have a willfully impeded other competitors. In the shorter relay, each runner covers 100 meters. In the longer, they have 400 meters. Relays in which members run different distances are called medley relays. Let's proceed to hurdles. Hurdling is an event that requires outstanding sprinting ability to be successful. The best hurdlers are excellent sprinters. Other necessary physical characteristics are rhythm, flexibility, coordination, balance, and efficient technique. Hurdling is the act of running and jumping over an obstacle at speed. In the sport of athletics, hurdling forms the basis of the number track and field events which are highly specialized form of obstacle racing. In these events, a series of barriers known as hurdles are set at precisely measured heights and distances with each athlete must pass by running over. For the setup, the placement of the hurdles depends on the length of the race and the sex of the athlete. 10 hurdles are used in the 100 meter, 110 meter, and 400 meter hurdle races. Men run the 110 races with 9.14 meters between hurdles and women run the 100 races with 8.5 meters between hurdles according to IAF rules but both men and women run the 400 races with 35 meters between hurdles. Let's talk about steeple chase. This is not a pure hurdle event. The steeple chase combines distance running and a different form of hurdling. The 3,000 meter race features no barriers on the first lap. Each of seven subsequent laps includes five hurdle jumps, one of which is followed immediately by a water pit that slopes upwards. The better jumpers are rewarded by leaping into shallower water. The race begins on a curved starting line, but runners do not remain in the lane. Jumping Events these are the whole sequence of this game. We have approach, take off, flight, and landing. High jump. In the high jump event, the athlete gets a running start and must jump over a bar without knocking it over. They land on a big soft cushion. Like many track and field events, there is a key element to doing well in this sport, which in this case is being able to jump high but technique is very important as well. Timing and leaving your feet at the right point as well as how you bend your body as you go over the bar are very important. 
Of all the jumping events, long jump is perhaps the most natural to perform and the easiest to learn. The objective is to take off from behind and specific and to cover the longest distance possible before landing in a sand-filled pit. The long jumper must possess good speed and powerful jumping ability. Pole vault. While all of the field events take required technique to excel, the pole vault may be the toughest to master. In this track and field event, the athlete runs down the track holding a pole at one end. At the end of the run, the plant the far end of the pole into the metal box on the ground and then propel themselves up and over high bar using both a jump and a spring of a pole to gain height. They must get over the bar without knocking it off, then land on the large soft mattress for safety. Triple jump. Triple jump is formally called hop, step, and jump. As in the long jump, horizontal velocity is a very important factor for the success in the triple jump. This is a speed event. The triple jumper must take off and land on the same foot in the first jump. On the second jump, the jumper must take off and land on the opposite foot and on the third jump, the jumper may land in any manner. The triple jumper must also possess balance and high level of leg strength and power. Let's proceed to throwing events. First is shot put. The shots are made of cast iron, bronze or brass with a lead center which weighs 16 pounds for men and 8.8 .8 pounds for women. The shot is thrown by a player from a circle with 7 feet or 2.135 meters in diameter. The distance thrown is measured from the inside of the circumference of the circle to where the shot lands and its nearest disturbance of the soil. Discus throw The discus throw is done from a ring or circle with 8 feet and 2 and a half inches in diameter. Athletes throw a two kilogram plate-like implement. The discus is launched after the thrower starting at the back of the circle has completed one and a half turns. The facility for discus throw includes a throwing circle, protective cage, and landing sector. Hammer throw. The hammer throw is a throwing event where the object thrown is a heavy steel attached with a long wire to a handle. The facility for the hammer throw includes a throwing circle, protective cage, and landing sector. It is usually combined with the facility for the discus throw. Javelin throw. The javelin throw is a throwing event where the object to be thrown is a spear-like object made of metal fiberglass and in some cases carbon fiber. The facility for the javelin throw includes a runway, a throwing arc, and a landing sector. The minimum length of the runway is 30 meter and the maximum of 36.5 meter. It is marked by two parallel white lines with 5 cm wide at 4 meter apart. In life, we also have contests or athletes to fight. It's up to you and how are you going to prepare and compete with it. Everything you do, just consider that God is there to guide and protect you. Thank you very much for listening. God bless you always. See you next meeting.